a little mini review video for uh, the Super J Cup 2019 and the Royal Quest show as you know one of those things on New Japan World it got uploaded on the second I believe I wanted to upload this on the third but you know things happen plans change all that good shit and we have uh, here on the fourth which you know it's fine it's just one uh, day past as of just you know for the Super J Cup 2019 El Fantasmo won it all. He beat Dragon Lee in the finals, and he beat Will Ospreay in the semifinals. Post uh, finals match, El Fantasmo called out Osprey to a junior heavyweight title match, and disastrously called him uh, the autistic assassin off the cuff. I would like to say I'm surprised by his words used, but uh, I wasn't. His character, his shit he does, the way he dresses, the way he talks, the way he acts. It's like a 50-year-old kid who's playing online in his parents' basement. Uh, just terrible choice of words from El Fantasma. What a fucking idiot. Beyond cheap heat. He should have known better. Uh, he apologized you know, a couple of days later after kind of it was un everyone found out and you know, the U.S. Uh, fans that were in the... The show, and a couple of people were offended by it, obviously, because autism. Uh, you know, it's something that is al almost uh, just, you know someone, at least. Uh, about 90% of you probably know someone, or even know a family member of someone close to you that is autistic. And it's such a, a sore subject to talk about. And uh, especially when it's used like that, uh, just, it's... What type of idiot to end the wrestling show would call someone autistic just in a distasteful manner? Uh, how many TV shows, how many movies have you seen where the villain characters use autism as a belittlement in, in, in any type of the act? Never is the answer. It takes zero effort and zero class to do so. And there's a line, you don't cross it. And some, someone's mental development state is one of those things it's pretty simple you just don't talk about it. it's simple and uh, i don't know if new japan specifically apologized for it i never saw anything i, I never even kind of wanted them to see it because obviously i knew that it was just all el phantasma that's all you know all him it wasn't like new japan wrote in a script or anything as uh, I, I hope they did find him at least and gave him some type of disciplinary action for it in some fashion uh, he, he just should have known better. It's just is what it is, and uh, you know it's still not on the New Japan World site. I you know who knows when it's going to be uploaded. I I would assume after the Destruction shows, but hopefully it's uploaded before that. And you know the week after, you know it's so around somewhere past in the tenth, eleventh, something somewhere around there. But all in all, you know I think that was the biggest takeaway from the Super J Cup. Sadly, was El Fantasma being a fucking idiot. To uh, end the show. And uh, now go on to the New Japan Royal Quest show however. Now that is something that is on the New Japan world. If you bought the show on Fight TV when it was live. Thinking it would be on New Japan world weeks later. I feel for you. That's rough. Uh, I did not buy it on Fight TV. I just had a sneaky feeling. They would upload this show before Destruction Tour started. And just because it, it, was, it was important. You know it was special. You know, the first really England-based uh, New Japan show that's being broadcasted throughout the, uh, as a, you know, under the New Japan banner. That's huge. So I figured they would upload that in a timely fashion. But the Fight TV thing did scare me. I'm not going to lie to you. I was like, well, if they're throwing it on Fight TV, maybe it'll fucking wait a bit. But uh, nope, <laughs> like two days later. And it was an eight-match card, four title matches, the IWGP Tag Team titles, on the line, the Never Open Weight title was on the line, the Rev Pro British Heavyweight title was on the line, and of course the IWGP Heavyweight title was on the line. The opener was uh, Rapungi 3K, Rocky Romero, Sho and Yo, taking on Raisuke Taguchi, Shota Yumino, and Ren Narita. Rapungi 3K won with a powerbomb lung blower from Sho on Ren Narita. Fine opener, fine opener, as uh, Kota Ibushi and Juice Robinson took on uh, Yujiro Takashi and Hiku Leu. In the next match, maybe the worst team in New Japan, and Yujiro and Hikuleo just got awful team. Uh, obviously, the worst match of the show. You know, no surprise, the Ibushi and Juice win. As uh, the, the debuting, uh, really, I, I would say the, the debuting team of the Birds of Prey, as in Will Ospreay, Robbie Eagles, taking on Taiji Shimoi and El Fantasmo. I l obviously like the pairing of Ospreay and Eagles. That's a great junior tag team. 
And also, solid matching gear they had. Just give them the fucking belts already. <laughs> They've already got it. The finish, Spanish fly for the Birds of Prey on Ishimori. They get the win. Good match overall. You know, obviously you knew that Ishimori's going to take the fall out of, you know, because El Fantasma and Will Osprey have their title match. So, I figured they would protect both those guys. And Eagles could have, but I just figured they're the new kind of form team. Figured they'd get a win. As uh, Tetsuya Naito and Sonata take on Jay White and Chase Owens in the next match. Sonata makes uh, Chase Owens stab with Skulls in. White puts the boots to Sonata and he beats down Naito. Post the match, obviously, again, same thing. You knew Chase Owens, you know. If one guy's taking on Okada in a title match. The other two are having their title match. So Chase Owens, the odd man out, obviously, is going to take the fall. But, uh, you know, good opportunity for him to get on the show. As uh, the IWGP title match, Grills of Destiny, Tama Tonga, and Tonga Loa take on uh, the Aussie Open. As obviously, Aussie Open have no chance of winning this match. But a fun opportunity for them. Uh, and, uh, you know, they got uh, they, the title shot from winning a rough pro tournament in August. Obviously, G.O.D. win. No surprise there. Never open weight title match. Kenta versus Tomori Ishii. Some great stuff here. G.O.D. got involved. Ishii fought them both off valiantly. Hits a brain buster on Kenta. G.O.D. pull out the ref. And come in. Hit Magic Killer. Kenta pins him. Ishii kicked out. Thank God that was not the finish. Or that would have made Kenta look like just a fucking dweeb. He hit the GTS and he got the win. About three or four minutes later on. Uh, you know. Of course when G.O.D. got involved. It was clear that Kenta was winning. Yeah, it just made sense. From that pr perspective. Uh, you know. Getting a title win for Kenta. Is a good way to kind of. Bring him into New Japan the fold post debut of the G1. As of the ref for a British heavyweight title match, Zack Saber Jr. versus Roshi Tanahashi. Of course, these two no strangers to each other. Dragon suplex from with a bridge from Tanahashi. Zack kicks out of two. Tanahashi got up to the tap rope, hit a high fly flow, and he gets the win. I guess that uh, Zack Saber Jr. was winning and retaining. A huge props for Red Pro for getting uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi as a champion now. Uh, the home return falls short for Zack Sabre Jr. Tanashi joins the list of Japanese talent to win the Rev Pro British Heavyweight title in Katsuo Shibata, Minoru Suzuki, Tomorishi, and now Roshi Tanashi, making four total. As uh, they will have a uh, rematch for this same belt at the first Destruction show. And so, you know, pretty much a week's time now. So pretty soon. Obviously, I think that's the biggest... Uh, Thing that's gonna hold that match is just because it's so soon from this match. Because I thought this match was fairly well. The crowd was great, and you know everything. But uh, it's gonna be tough. It, it, but who knows? We'll, we shall see how it goes. As uh, you know, speaking of Minoru Suzuki, the main event: Kazuchika Okada versus Minoru Suzuki, IWGP Heavyweight Title match. As a good bit of people from that I saw went to the show. Said it was probably the greatest match they've ever seen live. And I can believe that. Because these two make magic in the ring. And it was an awesome match. Uh, Suzuki hits an aw his awesome running single leg drop kick. I don't know if there's a better running single leg drop kick than his. I mean, he fucking murders the guy every time he does it. Falls up with a sleeper hold. Kata got to the ropes. Suzuki palm strikes Okada to death. Okada hits the drop kick. Hits a twisting tombstone, which was awesome. Because it looked like fucking... Suzuki was going to go for like a tilt, tilt award head scissors. I was like, what the fuck? And then, you know, he gets him in the tombstone. I was like, ah, oh, that makes sense. And he hits the Rainmaker and he picks up the win. Hell of a main event, of course. Okada retains. Obviously, really no surprise. Uh, he just figured the Okada Ibushi match is pretty much set in stone at this point. Match of the night for me, for sure. 1000%. This match was a great match. Great stuff. All in all, fun show for New Japan's first little England show. I enjoyed it, as uh, my preview for the Destruction Shows will be up tomorrow, so look out for that. As uh, Until next time, take care, everyone.